Hey, what is up, everyone? It is Rich and Kelsey. Kelsey and Rich. <laughs> who, who are you talking to, Rich? It's just us. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of funny. So I had thrown myself into the live stream before we went live for all of you. And uh, I didn't even realize that the camera was actually on me. And so Kelsey was watching me for a couple of minutes. <laughs> I had no idea that I was actually like, I, it didn't even occur to me that you could see me. And I was, I told him, I said, it's a good thing I wasn't doing anything bad. <laughs> yeah, he was just manicuring his nails. He's right. real fastidious about that. <laughs> I was putting makeup on, cutting <laughs> up my hair. Got to look good. We're YouTubers now, you know. Uh, yeah. Got to look good for the camera. <laughs> Entertainers. <laughs> so uh, we were we were both saying that that our week was very busy the past week. <laughs> We hardly talk to each other, which is, I mean, we the romance is over, and now we're just like, yeah. you know, we're rolling out of bed, making some coffee, going, Ugh, and you're like, oh, and then, yeah. you know, <laughs> but now we're just like getting to work, and and uh, we both have like a lot of projects and big projects for us, yeah, and uh, uh, there's a lot of focus being put on it is, uh, you know, making that good. So, uh, but. These are great, like unwinding sessions, a great, like refill the tank kind of sessions. I agree. You know? I was looking forward to it. And it's funny because there's two things I look forward to in the week. One is this, and then one is kind of like being done at the end of the day. If you put in a hard day's worth of work, like there's kind of a finish line for me. Like I try to stop working sometime around 8 30, but I mm. work earlier in the day. You know, like I start earlier than a lot of artists. When um, do you wake up? Like, what's your day like? I wake up around five. Uh, oh. Not an alarm, but just uh, yeah, I wake up super early. I love waking up early. Uh, I just my sh my schedule gets shifted around from these live streams and stuff. But yeah. I generally like waking up like six, you know, six yeah. seven o'clock, where it's you know got the dew is still on the leaves. You know, yeah. <laughs> you get your yeah. coffee, just feels good, you know. And then cutting out around like you say, uh, anywhere from six to eight, stopping. You yeah, know, and and I'm learning. Uh, there's a buddy of mine. I, I'm always talking about timing with people and like their schedules and how they sure. do things. And uh, I was talking to a buddy of mine. There's there's this artist that uh, uh, we have a mutual friend who's really really good. He can crank out uh, a penciled ink and colored book in three weeks. Oh and my like God. that's his thing. And uh, he my my buddy was asking him one time. Um, you know, uh, or no, no, no. He got mad at my friend. He's like, no, you, you know why you have such trouble, like, you know, finishing stuff yeah. It's because like you stop and like reward yourself before you're done. He's like, no, oh. you gotta, you have to f finish your, your work before you go watch that TV show. Yeah. You know, and it's such an easy thing to, to do, but it's hard yeah. to implement. <laughs> I watch, um, like when I'm, <laughs> this is my reward at the end of the day is I watch this, this guy that does guitar reviews called Trogly, T R O G L Y. And he, he, he uploads daily videos. So they're usually like 20 minutes. So I always will watch a Trogly video. <laughs> um, and then I study. So like when, I'll go out in the living room, probably around nine o'clock at night and I'll study till I go to sleep. I stick on the headphones and put on music and then I'll just, I get on my iPad and look at art. Oh man. I, it's funny. Cause I caught you one time and I'm like, what's you up to? And you're like watching guitar porn or something like that. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and you were like, look at this. And it was like a fender or something. No, what was it? Oh, right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what's funny is so, so I said this to a friend of mine, like, like my reward for all the hard work that I'm going to do this year, meaning um, probably 2021, since this year is almost over. I mean, next year I'll have three books out. I'll have two issues of Blaster Kid and that heavy metal book. And the heavy metal book, by the end of the year, I'll have like 100 pages of that done. Mm. Um, so, I mean, next Golly. year, I'll, I'll, all total, I'll have done close to 200 pages of pencils and inks oh, by man. the end of next year. Good times. Yeah, That's but awesome. my my reward at the end of all that is going to be I'm going to buy myself something kick ass on the music end of things. I don't know what, but hey, you know, you know what I really want? I've been watching these guys do uh, uh, the turntables, and they have these little sound machines. They have the two turntables, yeah. and you can like they got yeah. the little faders, and, and I, I'm like, I don't really want to do anything for you know to try to sell or like do anything for real. I just sure. love messing with music and stuff like. Uh, and just having a keyboard and just messing around with this noise, you know, you need some kind of hobby. 
But he's so, a black flag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I saw a comment in the section. Okay, so there were a couple of things that we want to hit. First, I wanted to tell you your Mike Miller video that you did the other day, yesterday. <laughs> that was hysterical. That was the funniest thing ever. It's always so busy in his house. And then I was watching the pre Jack show, uh, which is Deadwood Dale and uh, Adam and Friended and uh, now uh, Patrick Thomas Parnell's uh, yeah. joining in. But they were talking about that, how about how busy it was. And they were right. thinking of like, oh, man, what if so-and-so walks past, you know, and right. they were going to all these ideas. And I'm like, oh, that would be, I could do that, you know. <laughs> it was it was so funny and when you you know like you have to understand is like i know mike is perceived a certain way in in like comics mm. but i've known mike literally since before i broke in so i just know him as mike you know mm. like like it's not mike the political guy or mike the whatever you know like all the different yeah. things that have been sort of lumped onto him i just know him as like like you know oh like, he lumps it onto himself come on there, there, <laughs> <laughs> but but seeing that was just it was hysterical. There's no way that he didn't laugh when he saw that. Oh no, he got a kick out of it. Yeah, yeah, it's all in good fun. Like a lot of these guys, I tend to meme hysterical. some I tend to meme some like really divisive people, but you know, I, I'm doing it all in good fun. Um, you know, these are just human beings that have their failties. It's not me for not for me to judge, but when I see a good comedy bit, I'm gonna I'm gonna milk it. So. Oh, it was really funny. <laughs> And then, um, so let's talk a little bit about what you're working on and what I'm working on so that we can yeah. get the word out for your book. Well, first, uh, you you got uh, both of us working on Blaster Kid, uh, yes. which is going to be this sweet book. I don't know if you guys have seen the art out there. We should probably have it ready, but I didn't think yeah. about it. Yeah, no, it that's, that's okay. They've seen the, the pieces that we've leaked out. Um, but yeah, so so Blaster Kid, what... what uh, my my plan is I, I decided with the holidays and how much uh, sort of weird political kind of junk was going on. <laughs> Someone suggested I buy the Adam Jones signature guitar. That will definitely not happen. <laughs> <laughs> that thing's way too expensive now. Um, but uh, yeah, so I I'm gonna la launch it. I think like the second week of January, and and it's it's full full steam ahead on it. I'll be done with the first chunk of this heavy metal book. The breaking the heavy metal job is a hundred and twenty page uh, book, but it's split into four releases. Mm -hmm. So I just like I'm kind of on the line every three or four months for like thirty pages on that. But any downtime will be uh, to Blaster Kid, and then when Blaster Kid launches, that'll be the priority, and the other book will sort of be the second fiddle to that. Um, mm. So it's kind of like I look at I look at the two jobs as like a runway and I'm going down the runway and heavy metal job is giving me steam. Blaster kid puts me up in the air and then it's just I'm off off and running because it's you you understand it's a very, very difficult transition to go from being oh, yeah. a colorist or inker into penciling and inking your own crowdfunded book. It's not it's not as simple as just launch it dude what's like what's yeah <laughs> it's this whole mental game you have to switch over and then there's this little transition period that's rough but you know you get it it's like a yeah we're it's a it's a whole thing you got to do but uh, we're both on the runway you're you're on, what's interesting is your runway is working with like richard c meyer and and yeah. he has so much experience doing crowdfunded books that it helps you understand the process and get in the air with it yeah, I've been following these guys for a while, just keeping keeping tabs on on what the successful campaigns do, and even the ones that are mildly successful. Uh, um, just just because it's it's good idea to kind of see what people are doing, especially if you want in on this game. So, um, and I I like working with these guys too. You know, uh, same same reason I became an anchor and as a colorist is to learn. You know, yeah. so the best way to do it is just throw yourself in there and. Yeah, and uh, I've had the fortune of working with him uh, quite a bit. Is <laughs> I've had to learn to answer the you know emails and and uh, and get work done. It's always never been my strong suit back in the day, but um, this whole this whole time in comics has really kind of lit a fire under me, as well as probably a lot of people. So it, I'm totally on fire for for doing work. If you share my screen real quick, I want to share yeah. the thing we're talking about uh, with uh richard uh is impossible stars now he's closing this out um tomorrow, I, think I think tomorrow and then he's doing a uh black friday sale through monday I, i'm not really sure what that's all about but um this is impossible stars written by chuck dixon and drawn by renzo renzo rodriguez i think 
Uh, did a really good job. Uh, the color is nice. I, I really like this. I'm looking forward to the story because I'm a huge Chuck Dixon fan. Yeah. But uh, also, um, uh, Mike Barron and myself are doing uh, this Nexus story, and I'm I'm working really hard right now to finish uh, a nice batch of pages that we can show off because uh, uh, I know that would help boost the uh, sure. you know the sales on this because what he's really looking for is. 2000 backers he's got 1954 oh, right. right now so there's not many left um but when he hits the book right like that's the caveat to do a sequel i think so to do a sequel on possible stars and it'll also be a sequel of nexus this whole thing starts over again at 2000 backers and right. we have the nexus story is a three-parter uh, okay. And I'm sure I'm sure we'll figure out a way to do it at some point or another. But uh, I really like this team up. I like being with Chuck, and right. and uh, it, it's just kind of a fun. It's very. I'm a big sci-fi nut, so this is good. Right. So yeah, if you want to get this uh, Nexus, um, uh, uh, this is a great buy, man. Please uh, please back it if you haven't already. So yeah, very very cool. Okay, so you ready to get into Matthew Lafray? Yeah. Without further ado, uh, the man of the hour. Um, Oh, hold on. Let me show the book. I brought it in. So this is the book oh, that yeah. I was original, not originally exposed to Matthew's work. I was already a fan, but my real good friend Carlos Deanda went to Europe, and when he <laughs> came back, he was nice enough to buy me a book. Like, I mean, that's just incredible. To Deanda's me. a saint, man. He really is. But so this like, is literally, I think he went to like seminary school and stuff. <laughs> oh, oh, right, right, right. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, look at that. That's amazing looking. Yeah, book. it's got a, it's got like a plastic chromium cover on it, and um, this book is pretty old now. Honestly, two thousand three, it came out. Oh wow! So I would say I discovered Matthew's work in probably two thousand or two thousand one, which actually is even surprising to me, because um, I didn't realize that that uh, you know what it, I bet I bet this book had been out for a while, and and I discovered him probably in about two thousand six or seven. Um, that's going to be my guess on this. I'm not really sure when I first saw him. I just remember going to the comic book shop and seeing this book called Profit that he did. P R O P H E T. I guess that's how you normally uh, spell it. But um, and it was I, I I just was blown away. I, I had no idea. Actually, no, 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 no. I take that back. That was the second time. I didn't realize it was the same person. The first time I saw him was uh when Mike Barron and Olivier Vatin did an adaptation of Star Wars: Heir to the Empire. Okay. Uh, the Thrawn uh, trilogy, and uh, M Matthew did the uh, the covers, the painted covers for that. And um, I was kind of like, yeah, th at the time, I was like, yeah, this is cool. It's kind of a Stru Struzan thing. Uh, yeah. Give Give me uh, Olivier any day, but right. Uh, but th but then I found out that these covers. If you want to share my screen, I got the yeah. first Star Wars cover. This is the first thing I ever saw. So it was interesting that you brought up um, Olivier Vatin because I mm -hmm. always equated, and it was funny, I was trying to think of another artist to compare Matthew's work to. And to me, he kind of ran in the same school as Dermot Power. Do you know yeah. Dermot's work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like when I saw Matthew's work, I was like, oh, he's kind of like Dermot Power. But Vatin is another great example of someone that I would say that, that they're they're sort of brothers from another mother kind of deal, like, like – uh, Similar I think those guys all kind of came up around the same time, you yeah. know, and uh, they're all European and um, they were probably all gelling on some of the same uh, yeah. pop culture and art and stuff at the time in, in Europe and America and everywhere else. Yeah. Uh, one thing I like about that, I mean, not all those guys are French, some of them are British, but uh, one thing I like about the uh, the French is that they, they absorb uh, material from all over, especially like Japan, and then they apply it together they don't just copy they they amalgamize it they, you know they make something new out of it which is really great um but this is this when M matthew did this i keep wanting to say mateo because that's yeah. what i thought his name was for a while mateo and then i looked at it real closely i'm like oh that's like matthew yeah. you know? <laughs> fancy, fancy matthew yeah but when i um this this is just a couple years out of college when he when he landed this gig yeah uh he did a he did a book as he was finishing college which was uh, uh shown by or uh printed by delcourt and then he he started working on um brotherhood of the wolf you remember that movie 
Right. I it was you know it's funny as people seem to really like that movie. We saw it in the movie theater. They took all of Wildstorm to see that movie. Um, it was a uh, subtitle at the time called Le Pac de Lou. Yeah, and, right. <laughs> It, it started out great. I thought like the first like 20 or 30 minutes was awesome. And to me, it jumped the shark so fucking hard. I thought it was terrible. And it's funny because people really, I've, I've noticed recently online, people talk about it and they seem like everybody likes it. But I thought it was just a piece of shit or it ended that way. We'll say. I'm, real, I'm real iffy on Christoph Gans, who's the director. He he did a, uh, he's really into like anime and manga and he yeah. did an adaptation of Crying Freeman. Which, I mean, as far as you can adapt Crying Freeman on a low budget, it wasn't yeah. bad. But yeah. I was a huge Crying Freeman fan, or Ikigami fan, I should say, the yeah. artist. And uh, um, uh, Bronson, the uh, writer, I think he's the guy that wrote that. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, I, anyway, he did that Brotherhood of the Wolf. I thought, I was like, well, this is better, you know. Right. Um, and, and then he did Silent Hill, which I thought was well, okay. pretty, pretty freaking cool. Um, I like that a lot actually yeah and i don't know where he went from there but he's had this escalating like getting better as he goes kind of scenario right. which usually happens the other way around but i was real surprised to hear that uh matthew uh, worked on that and I, I had some designs for it we might run into that but sure cool um anyway uh this is the other book that after after that came out i saw this book profit which wow. uh cool. he was really kind of like unleashing himself oh here's another star wars cover yeah and that's got um, the, the structure of the head in the background is very Vatine. Yeah, he definitely was kind of like following, because I guess Vatine was the first guy to really establish what he looked like, uh, Thrawn. Okay. Um, uh, I'm not sure. Oh, but, wow. Uh, this is from the new one, uh, the Pirates, uh, uh, Pirate books he's doing. Um, it's, it's funny. It's got a little bit of a Justin Sweet vibe to it. I'm not, I don't know if I know Justin Sweet. Justin had um, he he he's a concept artist, really good, he heavily influenced by Frazetta and a lot of the pen and ink artists. This is traditional though, yeah, or digital? Yeah, no, he's tradi he's traditional, uh, and I think when he colors, which I have some examples of, the, uh, he colors on blue line traditionally, but I think he em emphasizes it with digital later because um, if you look at the actual books, it's like well, there's something missing in the yeah. But anyway, you can see how his style has evolved. He's, oh, that's he's, so cool. He's gotten a lot better at his like figure work. Um, I actually have this book here. Uh, it, it's funny because this this actually reminds me a tiny bit of your work. Oh wow, cool! I, I'm very much influenced by uh, Matthew. Uh, his his storytelling, and uh, which we'll see. This is such a like a fun book. Um, uh, but. It, it's uh this is out there it's really easy to get you, you know yeah. get it on amazon also the the uh um the pirate books too are also really easy to get uh profit though it's a little harder to find these days um, people will laugh at this but this piece reminds me of uh sean gordon murphy years ago um like kind of um <laughs> pretending like he discovered the holy grail of, like on his own and and it was like but i knew all the influences that he was bringing into his work and it was he was trying to take like full credit for for stuff, and I was like, "Bro, like, not everyone doesn't know these artists that you're that you're pulling from." But this this does actually have a little bit of a SGM sort of vibe. What's funny? Uh, uh, I think he was talking about this, but Atomic Bulldog Art says, "Take a drink for every time that Luke poses." <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> you have to understand when you get jobs like that, though. Sometimes they encourage you to use sort of iconic poses like you're gonna you'll get it approved quicker doing something like that than trying to come up with uh something clever and a lot of times they don't provide you with uh art or, or a photo ref um you have to kind of find your own i remember this story from drew struzan saying no they don't provide me with any of that i have to go get my own mm. <laughs> it's like holy crap uh but anyway you you can see uh that's great he, he's gotten much looser um with his style uh like if you go from profit to this profit's very much more uh controlled with little splashes of of uh uh you know the faster inking and then he just uh, he just kind of fully gave way to that um it's i i think it's really great it's it, it still yeah. has a precision um but in a much faster kind of style but I love his shots. Like, look at this. He's not afraid to pull back. 
you know, and, and work the, the backgrounds, obviously. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of that. Whereas I think American comics have a lot of like the character dominates the foreground, you know? Yeah. Um, here's some more fun stuff. Uh, what do you think? He's just doing this with a, probably tech pens and stuff at this point, right? You don't think he's using... I think there's a photo of his tool set on Instagram. We might have to like look at that. It was funny. I, I linked to his Instagram in the com or in the description for this video, but he had he literally had 32 posts on Instagram. That's a that's a light IG. <laughs> oh yeah, he's obviously busy, busy working. I mean, yeah. uh, he's more prolific now than he's ever been because he's he's been cranking out uh, at least a book a year. Yeah. Um, Here's a nice shot of his pencils, uh, yeah, which is nice. Cool. Yeah, it's interesting because he he does some just straight up shading, like on his yeah. shoulder here. Um, there's some lines, but he just shades. So I'm wondering, like, you know, he just goes in and does cross hatching and stuff because there's none of that really. Yeah, it would be interesting. I would be curious of what the inked uh, version of that looks like. How did he translate that? I think he switched up and went to this. Um, you know, where is it? Uh, right. Uh, this one, like I think oh. he ended up going here. We may have pencils for this. I'll, I'll have to look, but um, uh, here's some more of his painting. Wow, that's awesome, damn, yeah. His digital, his his digital painted stuff is actually very very cool. I love the look of it. I I, th I want to say that this is traditional, right? Uh, see how you can see some, but it's it's getting yeah. harder and harder to tell these days. Um, yeah, but uh, some of this stuff just makes me think, you know traditional and he's really? one of these guys that's not afraid to do that though you know yeah um it's funny more. That, that actually looked like like it was screaming digital to me <laughs> that, that <sighs> it, it looks like texture brush to me especially like like when you really zoom in that that and look at the strokes in the background they're very very mechanical yeah. they're, they're squared off he's mm. using like a marker a marker pen it, you know, it, it could be an embellished traditional. Well, this this part right here definitely screams digital because there's a blur, a blurriness to it. Right. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, like I said, there, I've seen shots of him working on stuff. Yeah. Uh, which shows that it's traditional, and you'll see some side by sides that we have here of the blue line and the black and white. Um, like here, here we go. Got so many panels on these pages. Oh my god. I know that's one of the bummers for me about about European. They're using this big format, but then they do the tiny panels, and I'm like, man, blow it up a little bit. You got the. I, I love this giant imagery on on big pages. Yeah, yeah but, no, for sure. So you can see here how he's doing uh, kind of a watercolor. You know, it's on a blue line because you can see it taped here. Um, yeah, the line art, and it's on a heavy watercolor board. Wow, so cool! Would, I don't know how they must have a have have to take that to a special print shop uh, to have to print on a blue right. line on a on a nice piece of paper and then have the black and white on an acetate, you know. And the registration that's what these are right here. If you've ever yeah. uh, if you've ever wondered what uh, you know these little circle with the crosshairs in it right here, sure. That's a, and these corner lines, you can see how this one's not quite matching up. It's a little right. off. But those are registration for that very yeah. thing uh, to be able to line up the art, which I'm hoping they do digitally now. But one of the issues that I found messing around with that is yeah. that the paper buckles under all the water. And it's really hard to line up the artwork on the black and white with the watercolor stuff later because the it stretches. Yeah, it's crazy. So there's 11 panels on that page. Oh, my gosh. I'm struggling with a seven or the six panel page right now. <laughs> He's got well, 11. The heavy metal book that I'm doing is a lot of seven panel pages because they were originally thinking about it as a square format, like a LP records uh, shape. Um, but uh, yeah, the seven panels is it's a lot. I just, you, you just feel like you're constantly having to do new drawings. Well, the, the trick is, and I've tried to get this across to writers um, is when you're doing a lot of panels and you're showing like what, what will obviously be a small panel. Uh, 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 those are smaller panels are for cutaways, like cut, like in film where you have a guy loading a gun 
uh, and he's in there and he's talking and then you cut to a shot of him putting a bullet in, you know what I mean? A close up shot. Right. Maybe it's got one bit of dialogue and, you know, and the shot kind of exemplifies what he's saying, you know, um, or something like that, or goes yeah. against it, you know, something fun, but it shouldn't have a lot of dialogue and it shouldn't be like a lot of stuff to look at. See like this shot right here, it's just her hands. This is right. just her feet. This is just her emoting, but this is your establishing shot of that bit. Yeah. And then, you know, same thing here. You just got this kind of tight shot of these guys, you know, but this is after this nice establishing shot where sure. you can see these guys. So this is really definitely done, you know, um, <laughs> And I'd love to see the script to see what he's adding and taking yeah. away, you know. So Atomic Bulldog Art asked or said that he was almost getting a Roger Ibanez vibe from the art. Now, I don't know Roger Ibanez. Do you know Roger Ibanez's work? Mm, I'm not sure. I might know the work. Let me look him up real quick. Yeah, we'll have to Google that. I'm not I don't I don't know the art. Um Roger Okay, no uh, R R O G E R. Or R yeah, there you go. Uh, he's a soccer player. Yeah, I see all the different uh, the oh. similarities. <laughs> Not obviously, I got that wrong. Yeah, we'll have to look him up. That's a. I don't. Uh, look. I, and um, Michael Hing um, said Nestor Redondo, but I don't really see a lot of. Oh, oh, Ibanez is Jazz Maynard. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, that's an. He's he came up around the same time as as these guys uh, right. as. Uh, Vatine, well, Vatine has a longer history, but he really started clicking into gear. You know, um, he'd been around a little longer than these guys. In fact, I think he's kind of a like a stealth freeze is over here, where he's he oh, okay. he he open he teaches a lot, he oh, collaborates okay. a lot with people. Um, but look at this. I was going to show this. This is yeah. how the registration is off. Yeah, it's interesting. That's it's crazy. probably just the original, like like he just took a photo of the original, but you know, obviously when they shot it, they had to line it up better. I'm wondering, um, uh, we could look at the final page to see how the difference. But when you look at like the book, this is like a first layer. Like when you look at the book, it looks like he adds stuff digitally, right? Um, so, so I. This day and age, why not? You know, I mean, if, if you catch something or you want to make it a little bit better, I mean, the digital tools are there for us to make the art more kick ass. I'm not, you know, anti that by any means. What's funny is this is not even the same page. Why they put these two together? <laughs> <laughs> this is 44. That's 45. Yeah. And okay. again, one, two, three. Oh, we go back one. If you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten freaking panels. Wow. Dude, that's brutal. One thing when well, you can't, it is fun to do a lot of panels uh, if you if you do it right uh, because you can um, get more of a cinematic pacing, you know, with okay. your edits and right. uh, and with the dialogue. But you, you, um, you know, you can do a lot of cutaways and and really play with timing if you just have like an extra shot of a like this guy's reaction shot. I here, thought, you know. I thought of the most sacrilegious thing that you could ever do to one of these books is to do a remix where you resize all the panels like an American style. Dude, you can make a you can make a like a six issue series out of one book. <laughs> I know it'd be, it'd, be so, it'd be so wrong, but but kind of funny too. Wow, this I remember this piece with the sticks in the eyes. This is Prophet. This is like uh, I guess his second book. Uh, just a few years out of out of college uh, it, and it's it, so it, deft it, these pieces are in that art book this reminds me of martin Imond. yeah well you can see how much tighter he was too he was still um yeah. kind of loosening up uh but then you know in, in the in this area you can see him kind of loosening up a little bit but yeah. i really enjoy this this level uh and this oh, is later yeah. this is later in the series you can see him already speeding up damn and like getting a little more rough oh, with this uh, stuff that is so cool what is this from look at this face this is profit like book three or something Jesus. so he was loosening up even by the end of this series oh my um, god that is so cool and when you see the color too it's great because like this is he's walking this giant's walking through a city yeah, god damn and like that's all he puts for the city and the rest is like smoke you know and atmosphere Jeez. That is some hot shit right there. Look at that face right there, too. Yeah. But this guy is coming out of French, uh, you know, 
art college. So they, they have a real, yeah. um, real special kind of like, uh, learning thing there. I don't know what they're teaching them kids, but they're, they're amazing. Well, this, this era of his work, if you've actually seen any of Claire Wendling's sequential yeah. work is very similar to, well, Alex, Alice, Claire Wendling, uh, Matthew Lafrey, um, uh, let's see who else they all kind of work together, uh, especially when Alex Alice was doing his um, uh, Siegfried, uh, the ring cycles. Um, uh, you know, what I'm talking about that. Uh, I forget what you I call that. I that artist. I was actually going to say that I, I actually the um, what was oh his my name? God, we got to do an Alex Alice uh, yeah, I, series. I, if I see it, I may recognize it, but the name, you know, like, like seeing this piece, it just reminds me of how lucky we are to be comic book artists. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, so this is, is when people ask it too, like, why don't you do like fine art or whatever? And I'm like, comics is the only place where you can have this variety of things to draw, you know, and you're doing a masterpiece like daily, you know, <laughs> like, or every couple yeah. of days, it's opposed to like one a year or whatever that a lot of fine art does. Yeah, God, yeah, that just I would it, hang this on my wall and it's just one page out of 60, you know, what or whatever. I, what do I always say? I want to explore that world. I see this piece, I want to go in there and I want to start walking around. I <laughs> yeah. want to know what's in the buildings, what condition they're in. I Look, mean there's there's rich right there. Yeah. It just it makes your imagination just instantly like fire off all these scenarios. I think it's incredible. But you know, and, and this actually the colors on this book are actually very nice. I have this book. Actually. Oh yeah. And um I, I but I actually do think that it's kind of more epic in black and white. That that page in particular. It, it is. Uh yeah, I mean it's just strong stuff. I would kill to be at this level. I'm working on it, but it's yeah, it's gonna be a lifetime battle. Um uh this here's this is one from the new one um oh, interesting it, 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 the, I, I really like this new one because it's got the looseness of like the pirate stuff with uh, mixed with like his profit stuff and he yeah. like he opened it up though so you can see there's not as much black so you can kind of yeah. see his line work you can like this stuff you can see he's going really fast you know yeah. all this and it looks looks like quick pen marks um there's I a lot of there's a lot to take away from this guy's stuff, man. Yeah. Oh, dude. Hey, here's another page. I, I love how loose this stuff is and fast, and it has so much life, right? And energy, uh, and just you know, even just these faces that are sitting still. And look at these eyes. These eyes aren't perfect, but you get you get the immediate emotion from it. Yeah. And I think that that's a lot of times we lose that in trying to perfect our art. Yeah, and this guy is at that level where he's more he's just cranking it out, and uh, it's um, he's getting that shorthand, you know. Yeah. Um, this well, is so ask, great. Let me ask yeah. you this: Yesterday, I was telling you that I was working on a really hard panel, and I thought it, I was going to try to do it in an hour, and it ended up taking four hours. But, but <laughs> I actually, the thing is, is if I get something down in a sketch. And it's it's like a suggestion of something. I do like to keep that stuff in. I don't worry yeah. about tightening up things that much. Um, and it it definitely it gives you. It's like it, it's not the style that you expect to deliver, but it's effective in terms of having an energy. You know, it's one of the reasons why I went to digital in the first place uh, was so that I can get closer to my sketch by um, not having to translate it with a light box. Because right. that's one generation down, you know. Mm -hmm. Then you're you're tightening it up. That's another generation down. You're inking it. It's another generation down. So like I, I thought, oh man, if I could just do my quick sketches and then just ink what's there and not right. overdo it. But then over time, you start you know zooming yeah. in and getting all right. these details. Uh, whereas right. like this guy, because he's doing it um, on paper. Yeah, you can there's go, only oh. there's only so far you can zoom in. So that yeah. line is that is what it is. You know what I mean? Like there is no. When you work digitally, have you ever considered just telling yourself that you can't? Like if it's a 600 um, PPI or DPI, whatever yeah. they call it, like thing, um, you know, don't go past like 25 percent or 22 percent. You know, that's so, what I do now. But it, it, you know, you get into a role uh, with yeah. it where I like, for instance, I try to use uh, when I'm doing inking. 
like I have uh, try to have two sizes of brushes that I right. use, you know, yeah. like nine and like uh, 12 or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So that you're, cause sometimes you're tempted to, to go to a smaller brush to ink more detail, but it's like, nobody's going to see any of that. Well, so I've, no I've noticed with a, an artist that I'm a fan of that's been working more digitally is, is they're using too heavy of a brush all the time. Mm. And it looks very heavy handed and kind of, Ham fisted. <laughs> I do that too. I'm I'm constantly checking. Like what I'll do is I'll grab a piece of comic book art, like from X Men or something, right? And I'll overlay that, and I can check lettering scale. I can it, check uh, yeah. line weight scale, and I'm I'm constantly double checking. Good for um, you. That's yeah. the that's the right right. But way honestly, to... you don't have to do any of that if you're just drawing on paper, because <laughs> 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 you're limited to the eleven by seventeen. And you're like, okay, well, this panel is way too small to have this much dialogue and, and like a full scene. So you got to figure are, something else out. Like how good are your glasses, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, check this out. Look, he did a paste in. See oh, yeah, the, yeah, see yeah. The line around it. He must not have liked the original figure. But I love seeing that because, you, you you know, you, you come away with this sometimes thinking these, these European yeah. guys are like, you know, they got the school in, they got the chops. Uh, you know, they don't, they don't use white out or anything, you know, they're yeah. just, they're magic, but no, they're, they're uh, trying to make it work like the rest of us. You wow. know, um, this page almost has an, um, a Zipri vibe or as, as a repeat. I don't know how you pronounce his name. Very, uh, yeah. Um, I, I love that guy's stuff too. I'd love to go into him. We should uh, do a video on him. Yeah. It, it, you know, if we could all be uh, mature adults and handle uh, erotica, you know, uh, <laughs> oh, I've, I've, done, I've done some, I did Serpieri and I just, you just, oh, give, okay. you just give them a heads up when you go into it and say, look, like, like, uh, you know, yeah. You mature know. audiences only. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't been, uh, flamed yet. So they, I mean, I just, and I'll, I love the right now I'm kind of going crazy with the American style kind of, you know, uh, breaking panel borders and, and doing all that, which is a lot of fun, and it makes for an interesting page. But I do have a real heart for this uh, m more um, blocked off panels, you right. know. And you you let the storytelling happen within it. You're not trying to like because he's still got the you know left to right thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at this. It leads you down here. Yeah, her gaze and all that leads you over here. These lines lead you down, and you know, and then off. So. You still and look how he has this island. It kind of like stops you right there, but there's yeah. nothing over here. You just fly right on through. Yeah. So it's like he's got all these tricks in there still to lead your eye, but he's not doing it with like breaking panels and things like that. So right, very Kira style, you know, straight up storytelling. Oh, and then you got this. Look, another paste up. He's straight up pasted a whole layer of panels. This right. whole bottom section is uh, added. Like this looks like it would take. 15 hours to draw at least there's so much going on for for it well and he might because europeans uh their system allows the guy for like this uh right. to work on it as long as he has to up to a point and they pay him so right. if it takes him a week to do a page uh he gets paid for that page and the 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 publisher sees it will they they feel it's it's um justified if they're going to get a product that's this good that they'll eat the cost for that year right uh which a lot of companies can't do uh because their overhead is so high like dc and whatnot you know they did that back in the day with the graphic novels but. right i remember talking to humanoids years ago and it was like they would pay you like 60 grand to do a, a book like one book a year or something like that i'm sure it, yeah. you know sliding scale depending on your uh clout but uh that's you know that's good that's a good amount of money to make in a year doing comics yeah and i'm not i'm not certain what these guys these guys i, I was um i was in there uh trying to get a gig in a french company doing a book uh with jd morvan and um i just wasn't ready i really wanted to do it i love working with jd um but uh, you know trying to understand their way of doing things and the language uh, barrier and all this was was such a uh, kind of a difficult thing to get over, but uh, one thing I, I did get as far as getting rates from one of these companies, and uh, I, I was kind of shocked to see that it wasn't that far off from what we were already getting paid. 
Now right. I think we were at a lower end company. We were doing a, a book nobody's ever heard of, uh, sure. you know, a, a new story. So the rates might be different than like Matthew Lafroy right now. He's a right. known product. He can make so much money. He probably demands like a higher page rate, like a Jim Lee would, you know? Yeah. But, um, I mean, what I was getting paid there was pretty commensurate with, with American money. So I started thinking about this. I'm like, well, shoot, man, these guys are, you see them on videos and they got like the nice houses with the French doors open to like nature and birds and exactly. stuff are flying in. And it's like, they're drinking tea and they just look like they get loaded with cash, you know, and got no problems in the world. But yeah, uh, that's only, uh, that's only like, Francois Choutin, you know, <laughs> those yeah, guys. Yeah. It, you have to be one of Jodorowsky. So there was a question in the right. comments was, um, oh, uh, someone was asking if this is the new Valerian and Laura, Laureline. Yeah, it's when, called, it's called Valerian um, Shingaloos or whatever, uh, okay. which are these little, these little guys, I think. Okay. I don't, I'm not really familiar with the world. I have looked at these graphic novels over the years, but when I found out he did the latest one, I jumped on it because I'm like, I'm not a huge pirate fan, you know. Right. Like I, I love his work on that, but like I, I wanted to see him do a sci-fi, and so when I saw that, I'm like, oh, ma, so yeah. good. Um, those are great sketches. But yeah, go go snag that book. You can find it on Amazon. It's real easy. And uh you might be able to still find that art book of his too. Yeah. Um, all right. So I love looking at his sketches too, because yeah. you can see like this is a bad face. Oh, right, right. You know, so it's I love seeing you work out. Like I have a ton of those, you know, like before right. I get to the good one, uh, you know, you're trying out squash and stretch see what works oh this is good and then you end up with like a better one you know and like this face might be too realistic you know start right. loosening up get a little looser with it you know and then you kind of hit this happy place uh i don't do enough sketching i i, I kind of do it right on the page that's you know i've always been that way too i like like i've done a lot of practice but i don't sketch the way that an artist sketches meaning um like you know for enjoyment <laughs> yeah oh i don't i hardly ever do it for enjoyment anymore you know like uh those like doing these drawing contests online are about as close as it gets i mean not that i'm like i'm all about the money or anything but it's right. it's really a time energy uh money kind of thing and it's like if i'm drawing i'm going to be drawing for something that you know somebody needs i'm on deadline you know right when you, and you, you we enjoy that like to be clear it's it's not that we don't enjoy um drawing it, it's that uh like uh a, a, like a casual approach to it well gosh I, if you go look online i mean i did uh for 20 years i i did art you know just for experimentation you know right. uh, a lot of us did we were on like the drawing boards and the you know the different things we were drawing like pinups and and just learning and having fun and growing together so we did years and years of that stuff and it's all still online <laughs> yeah I love this piece because this this is another one that looks like he did it watercolor over yeah over a photocopy but enhanced it digitally because this color over this blue yeah it's really cool the part this is great. I love how he tucked her um her ass back like pushed it back yeah yeah it's <laughs> kind of a little sassy. Uh, but this is great. It has like a Phil Noto kind of thing going it on. It very much does. That it's like it's Phil wouldn't have have um, bent her knees, but um, mm. I, I like this a little better. Oh man, that's great! Wow, this is so good. Um, it's just a deft hand. Having her like mostly yeah. white, uh, and negative in the all his black uh, outfit. Yeah. It's just really great. Well done, Fuck, man. Um, and That's then all cool. this, I mean, this, this is like all this stuff for right here is like, you know, he's on the phone How chatting it up with Olivier Vitine making lines, you know, like, <laughs> God, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. So what up. did you have for lunch? I had the baguette and cheese. You know? Scroll up up here. 
Yeah, I just, I just wanted to see the top of the page too. What what? Um, so you're just finding these black and white scans online, or um... yeah, this is all online. I, I just did um, Matthew yeah. Lafre uh, original art. Um, it, it would be great to see a director's cut of this guy's stuff, like a uh, black and white. I think, I think there are. I mean, this is what sucks. The Europeans have black and white versions of a lot of stuff. They have black and white versions of. Uh, like I got a European black and white version of uh, Mike Mignola's uh, Dracula. Oh right, right. And uh, so stuff like that exists. Uh, uh, Claudio Castellini Silver Surfer. They have oh. a black and white version of that, which is amazing. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that was um, such an iconic book. Yeah, and I think there are black and white versions of this stuff. I'm not sure about the pirates, but I, I have yeah. seen it. Okay, oh. here's some here's some coloring from the Prophet book. So uh, I love. I love the kind of flat, it's flat coloring, but not, but painted, yeah. you know, like this is relative, relatively just one tone. And then he has the, the he probably does a grayscale first uh, and then throws the wash on top. I don't, I don't know. There's kind of this. Yeah. Wow. Like it could be like, there's elements where it's like, well, some of it looks traditional. Some of it looks digital, you know, somehow, I don't know. But this is one of those mysteries of his stuff that I've been pondering for a yeah. while. I love this too. <gasps> Look at it's this. Funny, this looks a little like uh, out of a uh, Koipel's uh, Magic Order. Um, meaning maybe I Koypel. see a lot of Koipel in this stuff, and it makes me wonder if Koipel was looking at. Uh, been. This is very similar than um, in Magic Order. Towards the end of the series, there's this uh, sequence with a a big monster coming down the street. It looks. It's not the same shot, but it's definitely got the same. Uh, vibe well even in his rendering and stuff like i i mean i don't know if again it's it could be a lot like matthew where he starts off very refined and then as he gets more comfortable it, he yep. loosens up and you kind of find your natural style that might have been what happened with olivia as well you know where he kind of quite was pretty rough like his blue like he, yeah. he can see his blue pencil He's just, he goes in, balls out. But he's been drawing for, geez, 25 years. You know? Yeah, he has a whole run. I mean, I remember first seeing his stuff on Legion Lost. Yeah. Uh, before yep. he moved to Marvel, he was at DC. Yeah. You got to look at that stuff because it shows. It's a it's, huge run. It's amazing, too. It's like when I saw that stuff, I'm like, nobody's doing sci-fi stuff like this. Yeah. You know, and then he kind of changed it up after that. But um, that was a really interesting time era for Olivier Coipel. Yeah. Um, here, let me, uh, where are we going next? Is that it? That's the end of this. All right. That's the end of this uh, this list. Okay. Um, I have some uh, books. Um Okay. Let me see where. Oh, and and uh, the other M is saying that IDW also uh, pu published an oversized black and white uh, Mignola's Dracula. Oh, okay. That yeah, I I think that that's the one I ended up getting. Um, right. But I, I remember hearing about that from people oh. I knew that got stuff from Europe all the time. You know, the years what? before that. One thing of note with that book though is that's not Mike Sinks. That's John Ray. R John Ray Nyberg. Nyberg. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he did a nice job. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, it, it, what it's funny because I used to prefer that when I was younger because it was so right. clean. And then I look at it now and I'm like, eh, you know, it's a, <laughs> it's a little. Now, let, me, uh, let me ask you this: on the black market, for years, it's been floating around comic book artist to comic book artist. I have the full pencils to Black uh, Dracula. Oh yeah, I, I used to have that stuff, man. I'd love to get that again. <laughs> I have a, I have it in eleven by seventeen in pencils. The whole the whole four issues. See, that's the thing. Uh, what was so great about back in the day is there was this there was this uh, you know underground art trading movement where we'd make photocopies of other people's stuff and pass yeah. it around. And I ended up with this like packet of like all oh, yeah. of Mignola's sketches for Iron Wolf, Fires of the Revolution. Uh, I had pen yeah, yeah, I had pencils from that. I had uh, pad, pad. Well, how did you get rid of that? I, I just lost it over the years, uh, moving think, a lot. Do you think I it got? Do you think it uh, walked away? Did it grow legs at uh, a studio? <sighs> I don't. Maybe, maybe. Oh. Well, I don't know because every studio I've had, this is where I kind of gathered it from. Ouch. You know, Ouch. but 
I don't know what happened to that stuff. Uh, and uh, Farfart and the Gray Mauser or Iron Wolf? Iron Wolf. I, oh, I didn't man. have any for Fard, but yeah, oh. he had like all these early costume design stuff. It's just, oh. It looks like little little Mobius drawings, kind of his like early little yeah. sketch work. But um, uh, anyway, here we can take a look at uh, actual finished work. Um, we'll look at one of these pirate books because this is like his new. Okay. Uh, oh, sure. This yeah. magnum opus that he's been working on. He well, obviously really what? Oh, I was gonna say the the covers of these are definitely uh, digitally painted. Yeah, there there's one in here. I think it's like the uh, in piece uh, for all the books, but um, this one I yeah. think is traditional, right? Uh, because it it just you can almost see the canvas underneath in some of these shots or uh, some of the yeah. um, but. Like with all his stuff, it's kind of hard to tell, you know. I think he might go in and do a little touch up, a little sure, you know, blast it with a little uh color dodge to really pop out the yeah, intensities yeah. of the color. But yeah, of course, I get it. Um, oh, but yeah. I I really love this watercolory, yeah, god dang look. I, I really would like to do comics like this, I just don't know. Oh, it's These, beautiful. And wow. they do it, they do it a lot, so they must have a system. See, and here's the deal: like they gave him some room to play. There's five panels on this page, and it yeah. worked better. You you get a sense of scale. You've got uh, that beautiful middle panel with the down shot is just yeah. fantastic. Yeah, they, it doesn't look like any digital shenanigans here, unless he's just bumping up the colors. So right. It looks straight kind of watercolor um but like this little bit right here see yeah. how natural that looks i mean it yeah. looks like blood splattered and then kind of washed but <laughs> i would i would work to get that he probably just went you know just i know <laughs> they're so good uh so yeah you could see where i pirated this from i i had the, i have the originals but um, well, we when first scans. It's hard to not, um, you know, what I mean, yeah. show it. I mean, because it's shooting the book is nice, but it's it's just not the same. Uh, Sitting Bull mentions Lafrey did a new pirate story called Raven. Yeah, I was telling Rich about that earlier. I think he, I don't know if that's a spinoff from this book. It might be, but he's obviously found his sweet spot with the pirates. He really seems to enjoy doing the pirate stuff. Yeah. Um. Look at this. I love this. He just left it white. Can I see the first panel on that one? Yeah. It was, a, it was dark. It was a little hard to see what was going on up there. Oh, there are they. Is the cabin filling with water? Yeah. Let oh, me like try to, I think I can widen this. Hang on. Yeah. It looks like they've got a hole in the ship and they're trying to like seal it. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they are. I love oh. his sound effects too. Clang, clang, clang. You know. Yeah. Do you think he? Do you think he hand draws his own sound effects and word balloons? Oh yeah, yeah. You can almost see the paint around it. You know, how yeah. that, he's like painting around the. And you can see the black going through here. And you don't think that 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 uh, he sends his pencilers to a letterer and then gets them sent back? Well, that I think they're doing their lettering digital or in paste up because in some of these originals that we've seen, he'll have the bulk balloon. Uh, with no lettering, and in fact, oh. that's a lot of uh, Europeans do that, where they'll draw the balloon, and uh, the lettering gets put on there later, which is something I I've considered doing, but I'm always worried that the balloon that I hand drew isn't going to fit the dialogue later, <laughs> or if I change something, yeah, then you have to like alter that. But I guess you know I don't know how these guys do it if they like because the little panels blank, you know, right. I don't know how they're they're just good, I guess. <laughs> I so like he's it. he's hand drawing these balloons. Yeah, on the art. I like I like the lettering, like the font that they're using is. I, I yeah, think cool. No, I don't know if that's like a font, but I know I I know that like um, for instance, you can go to uh, Tom, not Tom or Zachowski. Who who's the guy that does Blambot or not Blambot? Who am I thinking of? Um. Richard Starkings? Yeah, I think Starkings, you can actually go to Starkings or his his company 
Mm-hmm. And and you could hand give them the you know yep. they'll probably instruct you how to do it. You write all the letters in lowercase, all the letters yep. in uppercase, numbers, and they'll make a font out of your handwriting. Yeah. I, they did that for J. Scott Campbell when um, yeah. I shared an office. It was funny. Um, uh, Richard offered to do a font for me for free for uh, Blaster Kid. Um, so I might take him up on that. And then he just wanted he wanted to be able to sell it. So Sitting Bull says it's not a spinoff, it's a new story. So what is with the pirates? That's really fascinating that he's he's all into the pirate stuff. It's really, uh, he must love the imagery. I mean, look at this. I mean, how, how could you not? I really, I mean, look at this ship. It's incredible. <laughs> well, think about this too, is is it's it's similar to a Western and, and or e- e- yeah. a lack of technology makes it a, an adventure that uh, you can kind of escape more into. Yeah, but the, man, the, I would be afraid to start because of all the rigging on a ship is right. like insane. Oh, man, that's a great page. Wait, go back one. And he's not. Yeah, that's a really cool page. It's such it's such a great example of like his use of scale, which he yeah. he he had from day one. Yeah, uh, and nice. <laughs> then he goes down to the level of the fish hopping in the bloop bloop bloop. Yeah, it's crazy. So so, do you think that does he lay this stuff out full size? Like in pencil, or do you think he does thumbnails and then blows it up, or like what's the? He could do like a you know a quick thumbnail to establish panels on a on a on the script or something like that. I know a lot of guys do that where they'll just like okay, yeah. this beat, this beat, this beat. Here's my panels, and then they'll go uh, and rough it out on a larger paper. Like we were talking about Campbell, I know he takes uh, yeah. an eleven by seventeen paper divides it into four which roughly makes four right. equal size comic book pages and then he'll do it at that size and then blow it up to a full size so he's getting a little more detail yeah um you know uh I, it's just kind of like what you get used to but he's he might because of the the scale of the figures you know like it's really hard to get these these kinds of figures and like the detail in the boat and stuff like that when you're working small. Um, so I don't know. I'd be interested. Oh man, that's cool. Look at that. Yeah. I love this. You'll see me doing this a lot now. See this little tree hanging in the foreground. Oh, right. Boom. Drop a little tree branch coming in instant depth. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know if there's anything else you want to look at here. We could just breeze through more of this. Some of the pages stand out more than others. We, we you know what we should yeah. do is, uh, do you want to go to his art station page and see? What uh, oh yeah. There? I have that pulled up actually. That okay. was, yeah, that yeah. was, um, let me share it. He doesn't have much, but it, it's a, it's a great, uh, it's a different look at his stuff. Cause it is a lot of his digital work. Yeah. Um, let me make sure I know which one it is. Uh, where are you? Here he is. Okay. Share. And I'll grab it. And here we go. Add to the stream. Oh, yeah. There he is. Matthew. Yeah. I mean, already you could see. Uh, and there's the man himself. Um, oh, you, you can just you can scroll from left to right once you click on the first image. And we can actually go through the gallery like kind of an order oh yeah okay go good couple arrows um that's a nice piece it's cool try to get a little scale yeah i saw you use this one um this is definitely a uh, digital coloring at least yeah embellishment on it um, oh, it was all digital colors yeah i think he did well actually i think he did like a, a wash because see the right. wash yeah. on the cheek yeah I th- I'm starting to think that's going to be that's that's going to be the next trick, you know, the next thing, because like uh, all digital is getting kind of boring. Um, yeah, I like a little splash of realism, but I like the accuracy and stuff. Man, Holy smokes! I don't I don't even know how to look at this. Hang on. <laughs> yeah, we'll just, I, I don't think if you download it, it, probably won't be a bigger image. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. This looks traditional to me. Uh, oh, that's digital. No, no. This is this is definitely Looks this is definitely true. Yeah, you think it's true? <laughs> yeah. What a what, wow, like, I yeah, I don't think it is at all. That's funny. 
Yeah, there's something about the texture, uh, a consistency of texture. Um, I don't know. I, this looks, especially look at these lines or hands around like pencil over oh. it to define each cover. Okay. Oh, maybe. Wow, man, that's nuts. He's definitely been able to import his uh, his digital. But really I don't know. Look at this. There, see yeah. this little bit over the tree. But it looks like a photo bash on that like ink and statue too up there. The face, like that, to me looks yeah. like a photo that he's painted over. This could be a combo. Like I've heard of painters uh, doing photo bashes, printing them out, and then painting right. over yeah, the photo yeah, bash. Yeah. I mean, it's you know. There's going to be a lot of uh, interesting um, crossbreeds. I, I love looking at it and trying to figure um, it out. See, this is another one. I can't tell if it's this looks, looks traditional but digital at the same time. Yeah. It, you should definitely check out Justin's sweet stuff. If you like this stuff, okay. you'll like Justin's work a lot. See, like this little area right here makes me think digital. Yeah. But then you see, like, this over here, this looks traditional. Look, you could see the you could see the canvas right, right here. Well, I mean, I, well, no, I'm not saying for this particular piece, but it's like, I, I mean, you definitely can lay in a canvas texture, like as a layer. You know that all that. Yeah, but I haven't had this this level of see how it kind of fades yeah, in and that, out. That, that would take a lot of work to emulate that when you could just do it on real canvas and then come in and, and adjust it in Photoshop. Sure. But and plus you I, have an original style. Again, any other artist and I would say, oh digital, but Matthew is a beast. Yeah. Uh and it, oh man, that's a great shot. See this looks ah! <laughs> look at the look at the water at the bottom. Uh, see that to me this reminds me a little bit of um who's the guy that did gypsy? Oh, uh, the somebody's going to somebody's gonna beat me to it. Um, I can't think of his name. Uh, I, I know you're talking about, though. Yeah, great the, stuff. The Mar water. Marini. Marini. Okay. Yeah, like if you scroll up a little bit, um, the, the character looks a little bit like the character, like how Marini draws his men. Yeah, he does that kind of chin. And, yeah. yeah. yeah <laughs> it's a really, really great pose. But that water down at the bottom is just ridiculously cool looking. The wave, like the actual, not just the whitewash, but the wave itself with the wash going on it. The bits oh. of splatter. You had so much movement in yeah. this stuff. Uh, I wish I saw this before I saw the latest issue, before I did the my last issue of uh, Nora. Oh. <laughs> uh, Nora Saga issue three. I have this whole scene where this giant uh, chases them out into the ocean while they're on a boat. And I was trying to do water and stuff like this. I wish I had seen this beforehand. That would have helped a lot. There's a beautiful kind of peach underpainting to this that that really yeah. is like an inner illumination. You can really see it on his hand and yeah. kind of like the other hand up like there. And you see it like in the mast a little bit too. Yeah, he obviously did kind of a like a burnt umber uh, underpainting. Yeah. You see it in his pants too. Yeah, um, very, very cool. Burnt umber or uh, something Slot like that. Together one of those this this is such a beautiful piece man so this this is actually i don't know if he intended this but the uh an homage to uh the poster struzan did for uh muppet christmas carol <laughs> oh, okay interesting i wonder if i can bring that up uh it, it looks almost identical um it's except... funny because I don't, I don't necessarily know that. it's funny because i have the, the muppets caper or whatever it's got i don't even know what it is i never saw the movie treasure island uh, yeah oh yeah <laughs> um hold on one second let me see uh just just for yeah no it'd be interesting i'm wondering see. if i'm thinking of this correctly <laughs> there's a there's a santa like animated movie that just came out recently like north pole or i don't remember what it was called it's pretty good it's i think it's done by a french company actually um it might have been on netflix Hmm. It's it's pretty cool, but it's it's kind of like a European -y style. Um, all right, this is as big as it's gonna get. It's not exact, but Michael Hing says, Dear Marvel, it's time to quit. You can't compete later. <laughs> <laughs> all right, hang on. That share this real quick. Uh yeah. and then oh, let's keep going through his, his art station for a little bit because that's actually pretty cool. 
There's some uh, good shit in there. F O A. Those are those are his hit singles. Um, here it is. F. Where is it? F. Here it is. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. It's as big oh, as I can get. Sure, but I get it. The bend, the bend in the buildings and stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sure. I always love this wow, Drew's end piece. The, the animated thing is called Klaus. It's pretty cool. All right, let me uh, let's go back yeah. to the other sure, one. Sure, sure. Yeah, no, I totally agree. It's definitely got that vibe. But I mean, it's you know whether he did that or not, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, he's he's pretty much a badass in his own right. So uh, but he's a, obviously inspired by Struzan already. So so here's a funny thing: is there is a small part of me that wishes the inside of the book looked more like this cover, just yeah, because this is. This is a style that I could really, really sink my teeth into. When he does the interiors, although they look great, they they look like so much other European graphic novel art that I've seen that it's 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 excellently done. But I I think this has got a little more character and personality to it. Well, let's ask Chad. I'm real curious about the the um com like. Even even if it's digitally painted, but digitally painted comics as opposed to do we do we necessarily have to have uh, a foot in tradition and have ink lines and things like that, or can we do like uh, the speed painting? You know, I love the look of like the digital speed painting that I see some of these concept illustrators do, and I'm like, I would do, a, I would like to see a book like this. The, the slapback that you generally get from it is the fact that, that they've never really seen it done the way that I think you and I want to do it. Yeah. Cause it's, it's gotta be like a hybrid sort of, I think there's, there's a, there's going to need to be a balance to it. And so when you see just concept art painting, they can't, I'm not saying they like who's here in the chat, but the people that, that sort of shit on that idea, they mm -hmm. just haven't seen it done in a great way yet you know that's yeah and I, i'm not sure i could do it in that way uh random uh mcanderson says uh, styles all personal speed painting is variable not a fan of photo bashing um it depends because i i probably use photo bashing more than you would think uh and you know i just disguise it <laughs> but right. it's a great way to like get natural color um so sometimes when i'll see a photo and i'm like i really want that i'll just grab the photo and throw it in and then you know grab sample colors from it and paint over it um so there's nothing of the photo that exists really it's it's sort of like a starting point but right. that's probably not what he's talking about i think he means where there's like yeah. a photo of a building bashed in there you know or in a sky you know my wrap on on that kind of stuff, and I've I've kind of warned people about it. Is look, any technique that's easy to learn and easy to apply, everybody and their mother is going to use it, and it will get oversaturated. So yeah. ultimately, you you have to do it with a level of creativity and a level of artistry, and that just comes from hard work, you know. Yeah, that's true. If it doesn't look like a fast, like it was crapped out, and it did have, like you're saying, this level of, of artistry to it. Uh, like when you see, um, uh, who's the king of like digital painting, speed painting? Um, was uh, Craig Mullins. Right. Like when you look at Craig Mullins' speed painting, there's like uses of brush and flare, you know, and you could tell he did it fast, but they're, when you look at it up close, there's still. A level of artistry to how he overlaid the quick brushes and things like that. It, it, it was interesting. Is Craig Mullen stuff didn't age well for me? There's yeah, still, me neither. There's still a huge part of his body of work that I think is absolutely phenomenal. But when I go back and look at it now with like um, sort of 2020 vision, <laughs> but I'm wondering if that's because uh, people picked up the mantle sure. and there's so many people doing it. Yeah, and and have evolved to such a level yeah, that definitely. you look back on that stuff, and go, oh, that's quaint, you know. <laughs> well, what's the quote? It's not who did it first; it's who did it best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm loving these pieces that he's doing, where he's doing the gesso underpainting, uh, or the gesso uh, texture. Yeah, this is um, a piece. I've often wanted to try this digitally, but I don't think it'll have the same effect uh because it there's something about how paint although this is one of the cleanest i've ever seen this might be 
just that digital over a gesso that's fucking great but yeah I, I, I think it is i think it's it's an embellished traditional piece yeah but it's very difficult to tell well it's some of the smoothing and the lighting it's like uh, he's he's you know he could be using a little bit of airbrush but it's so yeah i think you would see more of the speckle you know like um, to me to me, this is a good blend where like, I, I think that, that a style like this with a little bit of pen and ink mixed in with it, not, not on this particular piece, but I'm saying like, if you were going to do a sequential book and you use this style and it just had a little bit of that meat on the bones that traditional inking gives or digital traditional, I think this could sustain a, a story and have the level of dynamics that it needs. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, Paul Sartre says, yeah, I'm, uh, I mean, legends like Furcon and Sinclair use uh, texture drops from photos and skies and backgrounds. I love uh, Steve Furco. Uh, yeah, Furcal. Still... I don't know how you say his name. I always said Furco. Yeah, I think Fur Furcal. Fur yeah. Uh, he actually colored a piece of mine a long time ago, Wolverine. Um, I was, I'm still such a fan of his color. <laughs> it's so good. What was interesting is, is the, the video that I did of, of the colors that I was looking for blaster kid, it was like 95% concept art. And the one comic book artist that I pulled up that was a colorist was Steve's work. Do you remember mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of, right. Kind of funny that. Yeah. He's so good. I, I just, there's something about how. I don't know. He he goes real saturated, but he also has the desaturated yeah. bits. To I don't know. He's very fluid. I love when he paints himself. Actually, he's a really good painter. Um, yeah. But this is definitely digital. I mean, right? Come on. But yeah, this is kind of what I'm talking about. This he probably did this in like an hour and a half, two hours. Oh so? damn! Wow. I bet you he did this really fast. Uh, it looks like he drew it by hand first because you see this enlargement of this right. where he put this uh texture you could see the line work see how the line kind of goes out yeah that could be drawn by hand and then scanned in and then colored painted right. over but you know oh, doesn't man. really matter you can tell i'm into this stuff i'm like moving closer and closer to <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like i'm gonna be like this in a second but i'm like i, I would buy a book that looked like this though like i oh, think oh, yeah. uh because it's it's fast, but it has a lot like you like we we're talking about and a level of artistry to it. Yeah. You can tell this is really whipped out some couple of brush strokes, but when you look at it as an overall, you know it's it totally sells the piece. So you know one one artist that that kind of brought it in. I'm I'm not like I this will sound weird. I'm not a huge fan of his stuff, but I definitely think that he's an excellent artist. Is Adi Granov does do sequential. Yeah in a concept arty kind of way he just says i think what it is for me is he's never done enough sequential books for me to completely be able to um like get into it it's real labored over though like um yeah i, I almost is. think that like you have to loosen up on interiors a little right uh to get it s speed up but also yeah. because the reader i think if you got if it if everything is rendered to full capacity and like labored over there's i mean there's no pacing to the reading i mean you're gonna stop reader cold on every panel and like looking at everything you know uh i don't know all that detail all that rendering yeah well, I think, and, oh sorry andrew tass said that he thought i was gonna say marco drujevic but the yeah. The difference between Drujevic is his interiors look like interior art. He doesn't yeah. it, it, it's, it's concept arty. Adi Granov actually has a very digital sort of vibe. Like it feels like 3D models that have been sort of turned into drawings. Well, uh, here, here's a great example. What I'm kind of what I'm referring to is you see how loose this piece is? I yeah. mean, it's it's quickly done, but it has the atmosphere, the character. Um, the detail, there's still detail, even though it's impressionistic uh, mm -hmm. in a lot of cases. I would love to see a book like this, but I don't. Uh, I don't know that everybody does. Like, um, Sylvestri will be the closest that you're going to get to that, even though it'll be. Right. But if he ever, if that Batman book ever drops, I think Mark. Mark is the last sort of mainstream comic book artist, uh, or from his generation, that I think is has got illustrator skills. Yeah. 
Yeah. And this kind of has a Sylvester vibe too in a funny way, even though it's a digital, it but you know. I, I think it kind of derives from Neil Adams. A lot of that stuff, yeah. uh, you know, uh, Neil Adams was such a huge impact back in the day. Kind of changed a lot of people. Uh, you could still see it in 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 uh, Sylvester stuff. Yeah, and I was just thinking, I might have popped in my head because this looks like Neil Adams Tarzan. Yeah, <laughs> and the girl looks like a Sylvester girl. It, she does <laughs> the yeah. hands and the face. Yeah, the hair. He's always so good at that. Yeah, that's a great. That's a great little drawing right there. Again, this is just a quick, a quick. Photoshop painting probably and I would love to see this in a story like as a you know this is a splash page in a, in well, a we're, book. we're storytellers you know I mean this this yeah. guy well, he is too though actually because because he is doing graphic novels but you know I mean some people they're really great concept artists and just don't get into the level of work that it takes to do stories but this guy clearly has got the the stamina yeah yeah Okay, so um, Atomic Bulldog is saying Granov's Namor the Deep is a great example. I'll have to oh. check that out. I've never seen that. I've never seen that. That'll be exciting. Thank but you. The, but the storytelling is glacial, meaning that you're so like looking at the art <laughs> that you're just not willing to move on. Right. right? <laughs> I but felt that way a little bit about Travis's uh, Meta Barons because like, I didn't care what the story was. I didn't I've care. Never read I didn't it. read it either. I just poured over every page, uh, looking at the, all the detail, and it was I, glorious. <laughs> I can't say for a fact that I've ever actually read X Men Wildcats Golden Age. <laughs> Why would I, you? I've definitely started it. I've definitely started it, but I don't think I've ever like about eighteen pages in. I just start staring at the pictures. <laughs> so here's a great example of his step by step. It's and definitely that looks like a Emma, Neil Adams, Frazetta, yeah. not Frazetta as much, but um, and Mark, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then he kind of refines it a little bit, starts adding yeah. opaques and stuff. You and then the the, the, the the mountain in the background is so cool looking. God. Yeah. And that's just some dashed out kind of painting, but in proper place. I mean, like, you're not going to just dash out this, uh, this little mark Ooh. right here. I mean, that that's... Is, that is good shit right there. Wow. Yeah. All of this stuff is considered. I'd like to know what he's using. This is very natural. It's so a, seeing seeing this now makes gives credit credit to what you were saying about those pieces being digital. Right. I mean, well, that's a, very natural. Oh God. I mean, I have so many custom brushes for like Photoshop. It's like stupid. There I've tons. But but uh you know those that that's just it's like a very blunt um big sort of texture brush i get it's, lost in this stuff in, in all my brushes so i end up just using like a handful but right um oh, these like, guys are wizards and they a lot of them will actually share their brushes online um do you know the artist Pelang? Pelang, p-e-l uh, yeah 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 i think i yeah he his brushes are out there there's some pretty interesting ones that he's got in that but it's amazing how he like refines it to this level where it's like he added this water bit, yeah, and it adds a graphic quality to the to the piece. Yeah, um, really interesting. What, what was that? That's my phone. Listen to my ringer. I know it's hysterical. <laughs> what is that? Star Trek? Uh, yeah, that's the uh, Star Enterprise. Uh, Dude, uh, this piece is awesome. Alarm. Is that Elric? Yeah, this is Elric. Yeah, I'm gonna have to run uh, okay. here. Uh, I get no so problem. much to do, but we're in an hour here. But no this was good. I wasn't sure how long we would go on uh, Matthew's work, but uh, you know, so but, much good stuff to look at. But uh, again, this is another like digital piece. It's probably fast. It's definitely more rendered. Uh, well, the, the sword looks like a photo, a photo bash. Yeah, maybe. That's, um, that's very funky. That's very funky looking it looks it's still cool i think but if that was a panel out of a, a a four panel page you know i wouldn't care you know <laughs> like yeah 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 i think if he would have drawn that himself he would have turned the sword at a different angle like like i don't yeah. i don't be like so i'm surprised he didn't actually paint it at a different angle to be honest yeah uh, it's not, working fast you know i don't know maybe yeah, yeah well, it, and it's an example of that type of work 
All right, let's roll the dice and see if we get a better one on the next one. Let's see. Oh, I don't think that's a bad piece by any means. So this is no, cool. no, no. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> so we get a good one to end on. Oh, right, right. Oh, they're all. I love good. the color in this one. Yeah. This is northern light vibes. I love see this little peak of sun sunset yeah. on the yeah. horizon. I mean, you think that that's super bright, you know, in the sun, but it's like mostly like a gray, uh, like a a warm gray. Yeah, you know, it looks orange because it's juxtaposed with this. This was uh, a blue. This was a very inspiring video for me, honestly. Good. Like, I, it it gave me a lot of ideas and. Uh, Same here. I mean, I'm I needed this today because I got a lot to do today. Uh, yeah. And I I need to get over myself and just jam. Yeah. So I need to. That's why I kind of needed to go over some, you know work of someone that's really good and has learned to let it go a little bit you know yeah. well and and he draws at such a high level it's not it doesn't look like lazy art it doesn't look like um mm. uh, you know he's just banging it out i mean there's a level of quality that he's bringing to these um very confident and, and as you said like spontaneous pieces I don't know if you want to take over, if you feel like keeping going and getting keeping the inspiration chain going. I, uh, I, I need to work. Like I said, yesterday, <laughs> what was funny is yesterday was a weird day for me because I really, like, I had a really good drawing day. The downside was, is I just spent way too long on that one panel. I just yeah. couldn't, I couldn't, it, I, I can kind of explain what it is. So I'm, I'm working for heavy metal. I'm working with a, a musician and the shot that I needed to draw on this particular shot was basically from the stage looking at it, a crowd with like a musician on stage. But it's like, I mean, one, that's a hard shot to draw in general. Two, how much of the freaking crowd do you draw? And this is one panel out of yeah. that. It's a seven panel page and it's one panel. And uh, yeah, it was Silhouettes, like, my friend, when all else fails. Yeah, but the crowd is too close. Like you would clearly see the crowd based on how clear you see the musician. And it's like, trying to figure that balance of, of <laughs> yeah you show like one or two getting hit right. by like lights oh right you know? yeah and then like the rest fall in shadow behind them and then you have like another group getting hit by lights so you only have to draw like a couple people here and there kelsey knows <laughs> i've right. had to do a lot of those it sucks oh, man. <laughs> when they're just like uh you know panel seven a uh, full crowd scene where we could see a thousand people enjoying it. And by the way, there's like 10 balloons of dialogue over the top of it. I know. What's the matter with you people? It's just like, it's like this is why I want to go back to Marvel method. You know, real Marvel method, not the no, one we're no, no. well, that's why That's why you want to write your own book. It, and exactly. You write your own book is it's like you don't make that mistake. You understand where, um, you know, it's like, well, if I'm going to spend a lot of time drawing this, I want to make sure that it's seen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, okay, well, thank you everyone for tuning in. Definitely check out Matthew's um, art station. And we have links to, uh, I think there's a Facebook group and then his Instagram. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's awesome. Pick up a book and check it out. That was nice too. Oh, I've seen this piece. Yeah, very inspirational stuff. Yeah, I'm definitely uh, fired up, man. Fired up to get drawn. Yeah, he's good. Really good. That was fun. I'm going to watch <laughs> that right now. And Sergio says, photo bash the crowd. There you go. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> all right gang thanks for uh hanging out always a pleasure rich yeah thank you we'll we'll talk in the the bye-bye room for a second so yeah okay. all right talk to you all later thank you see ya bye and